Hey, good morning. Welcome to morning prayer. I'll just allow a few people to come on and we'll get started. Hi, welcome. I'm just going to gonna angle you. Oh, there you go. Let's go up a little bit. Just uh, don't know why really, but there we go. Uh, just felt like it. There we go. Welcome to morning prayer. Um, we will, of course, do our usual prayers for everybody. Just wait for a few people to come on. Facebook has done some updates. The iPhones and Apple have done updates. So I have no idea what impact that will have on you guys as you join me, whether it'll be easier or harder, probably harder. Morning, Christine. just let a few people come on it's going to be a short one fairly straightforward this morning i'm doing the talk over at stanton coffee morning don't all rush over they've got a small room so it is um yeah they they it may be a little bit of a of a of a struggle welcome welcome to morning prayer i'm just uh in the process of getting all my bits ready before I go and uh, and we'll um, get started. Welcome to morning prayer. Hi June, good morning, good morning. It is just Wednesday the 20th of October. Nothing exciting, nobody's festival, nobody's anything. So we will just go straight through. Morning Kate, morning Caroline. I just, uh, what are you doing, Muff? What are you going underneath there, little darling? Yeah, I'm just looking for other bits that I, I'm, uh, I'm a visual person, so I'm using visual tools to help me uh, this morning when I do my talk. Right. Okay, let's have a quick look at the time. It's two minutes past. I'll give it another 30 seconds or so. And when we'll get started. You say I'm casting about with my eyes, my beady little eyes, looking to see what else I might use as a thing. But I think I've probably got enough to waffle on for a little bit of time, but we'll see. We'll see. Right, okay. It is... The 20th of October. Morning, Jamie. Morning, Caroline. I've said hello to Kate. Lovely. Morning, I've already said good morning to you, Christine. Did any of you rise to the challenge and do 10 minutes or two minutes or five minutes of just a bit of extra prayer? Five, 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 five in, five breaths in, five breaths out, five hold, hold for five. Did anybody have a go? Morning, Bill and Sheila. One Bill and Sheila, come on. And Pat and Ray, then I know I'm almost ready to start. <laughs> so welcome. If you don't turn up one day, I shall be, I shall be lost, Bill. Right, I am going to light our candle. Morning, Pat and Ray. There you go, you see. We can start now. Pat and Ray, I was just saying that until you and Bill and Sheila are on, I don't, I'm reluctant to start. You kind of signal that everybody's on. <laughs> Let's take a moment. Loving God, be with us this day. We thank you that we are your people, that your promises to us are renewed every morning. And each day, each hour, each minute, each second is a new chance to do better. Guide us with your Holy Spirit and encourage us, we pray. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. It is just ordinary time. I am going to uh, hopefully try and be fairly short on this one because I've got to go off uh, 
fairly quickly to do something else. And so I'll see some of you there and others I won't. But anyway, let's begin. O oh Lord, open our lips and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. The night has passed and the day lies open before us. Let us pray with one heart and mind. As we rejoice in the gift of this new day, so may the light of your presence, O oh God, set our hearts on fire with love for you, now and forever. Amen. Psalm 119, beginning at verse 153. O oh, consider my affliction and deliver me, for I do not forget your law. Plead my course and read cause and redeem me. According to your promise, give me life. Salvation is far from the wicked, for they do not seek your statutes. Great is your compassion, O Lord. Give me life according to your judgments. Many there are that persecute and oppress me. Yet I do not swerve from your testimonies. It grieves me when I see the treacherous, for they do not keep your word. Consider, O Lord, how I love your commandments. Give me life according to your loving kindness. The sum of your word is truth, and all your righteous judgments endure forevermore. Princes have persecuted me without a cause, but my heart stands in awe of your word. I am as glad as your, of your word as one who finds great spoils. As for lies, I hate and abhor them, but your law do I love. Seven times a day do I praise you because of your righteous judgments. Great peace have they who love your law. Nothing shall make them stumble. Lord, I have looked for your salvation, and I have fulfilled your commandments. My soul has kept your testimonies, and greatly have I loved them. I have kept your commandments and testimonies, for all my ways are before you. Let my cry come before you, O Lord. Give me understanding according to your word. Let my supplication come before you. Deliver me according to your promise. My lips shall pour forth your praise when you have taught me your statutes. My tongue shall sing of your word, for all your commandments are righteous. Let your hand reach out to help me, for I have chosen your commandments. I have longed for your salvation, O Lord, and your law is my delight. Let my soul live, and it shall praise you, and let your judgments be my help. I have gone astray like sheep that is lost. O oh, seek your servant, for I do not forget your commandments. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be for ever. Amen. Morning, Ken. Morning, Angela. Hope you're well. Morning, Christine. Morning, Ross. Good morning. Right. If you want to read uh, the Apocrypha for yourself. If you have the Apocrypha or the app, it's 2 Maccabees, chapter 7, verses 1 to 19. Or if you have a normal, and I don't, that's probably not the right way to say it, if you have a Bible that is the accepted usual normal Bible, then it's 2 Chronicles, chapter 34, verses 19 to the end. It's interesting to read the Apocrypha, not essential, um, which is why not every single Bible has it. It's uh, an Anglo-Catholic edition. It's, uh, yeah, have a read about it. Look it up. Wiki is quite good. Uh, there's lots of things that will give you an idea of the Apocrypha and explain it to you. Morning, Mary. Uh, but we are going to skip all past of all of that and go straight to John 15, beginning at verse 18. If the world hates you, be aware that it hated me before it hated you. 
If you belong to the world, the world would love you as its own. Because you do not belong to the world, but I have chosen you out of the world, therefore the world hates you. Remember the word that I said to you. Servants are not greater than their master. If they persecuted me, they will persecute you. If they kept my word, they will keep yours also. But they will do all these things to you on account of my name, because they do not know him who sent me. If I had not come and spoken to them, they would not have they would not have sin, but now they have no excuse for their sin. Whoever hates me hates my father also. If I had not done among them the works that no one else did, they would not have sin. But now they have seen and hated both me and my father. It was to fulfill the word that it is written in their law. They have hated me without a cause. When the advocate comes, whom I will send to you from the Father, the Spirit of truth, who comes from the Father, he will testify on my behalf. You also are to testify, because you have been with me from the beginning. Right, here ends the reading. And say, I am not going to go for too long on to this, because I have to get on to... Uh, uh, another meeting at 10. But there's a couple of things to draw out here from what Jesus is saying. And I think it's quite interesting that he said they didn't have sin until it was shown to them. Morning, Melanie. And I think what... what what we understand as people who are Christians, we follow certain uh, behaviours in order to follow in the footsteps of Jesus. We are trying to be good Christians and to not necessarily follow the commandments or the two commandments that Jesus gave, love one another and love the Lord your God. But... Um, we know that we fall short and we know that because we know of our sin. We know of our weaknesses as one of God's creatures and the fact that we're not Jesus. We are made in God's likeness, but we're not God. And we wrestle with that. And that's what we see in the story of the Garden of Eden, in that humanity has always sought to control what it shouldn't uh, and we see that being played out in our world in politics in the way that we treat our the environment our uh, self-appointed righteousness that we um we should have a bit like a spoilt child really is is quite often how most of us behave even if we don't realize that's what we're doing we have a sort of self-importance that means that we believe that we have the right to be able to treat the planet like we do, that um, there is no better way um, when there clearly is, but it means a sacrifice from us and we're not prepared to make it. We're not prepared to give up all our toys in order for the greater good of everybody having some to play with. We want to keep all the chocolate for ourselves and not share it with others. So we are painfully aware of where we fall short, though those around us live in a different way and don't, aren't aware of the great cost of their behaviours. And we meet people who unintentionally are the most wonderful people we've ever met, and we meet those who unintentionally, and sometimes intentionally, aren't. There is a sense here that we shouldn't be surprised if people look on us in this country of ridicule. In other countries, there is a chance of losing one's life for being a Christian. Um, 
And then we just go down to the Advocate, whom is the Holy Spirit. And it says, he will testify on my behalf. You are to testify because you have been with me from the beginning. So that's clearly to the apostles. It's much easier when one is talking, when someone is talking from experience to believe them because it's a first-hand account rather than um, something you read about or somebody's second-hand um, testimony. So always be prepared to share your experience of God because your experience is unique interesting believe me it is and worthy of sharing the advocate the holy spirit is who we seek to guide us in our daily lives to give us that sense of conviction our sense of purpose our sense of understanding when we have fallen short right I'm going to move on. We're going to go to the responses. Lord, you will guide me with your counsel and afterwards receive me with glory. Lord, you will guide me with your counsel and afterwards receive me with glory. For I am always with you. You hold me by my right hand and afterwards receive me with glory. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit. Lord, you will guide me with your counsel, and afterwards receive me with glory. I'm going to go to the Benedictus, the Song of Zechariah. If any of you were struggling um, from the challenge I kind of set you yesterday about praying for 10 minutes, if you get the app, you have got midday prayer, um, and that gives you some pointers and gives you something to say to fill up the gap if you find it too long or too difficult. I'm not going to spend too much time checking up on you. It's your own personal discipleship, as I mentioned yesterday. Only you can press in and grow. The, coming to church on Sundays is not enough in order to deepen your discipleship. Um, it's a start, and it's a great place to start, and it's really important, because without being with others we lose sense of our purpose and we lose sense of our own humility in life um but it is down to you so i've thrown out the challenge i may check up on next month well in a couple of weeks anyway let's get on to the benedictus the song of zachariah you show mercy to our ancestors and remember your holy covenant blessed be the lord the god of israel who has come to his people and set them free. He has raised up for us a mighty saviour, born of the house of his servant David. Through his holy prophets, God promised of old to save us from our enemies, from the hands of all that hate us, to show mercy to our ancestors and to remember his holy covenant. This was the oath God swore to our father Abraham, to set us free from the hands of our enemies, free to worship him without fear, holy and righteous in his sight all the days of our life. Our new child shall be called the prophet of the Most High, for you will go before the Lord to prepare his way, to give his people knowledge of salvation by the forgiveness of all their sins. In the tender compassion of our God, the dawn from on high shall break upon us, to shine on those who dwell in darkness and the shadow of death, and to guide our feet into the way of peace. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be for ever. Amen. You show mercy to our ancestors, and remember your holy covenant. So we're going to turn now to our intercessions for the world. It's the time when we, in our morning prayer, when we pray for the needs of the world. Now is a good time if you are wanting to pray for certain things or, or there are situations that we can pray for together. Um, do let me know. Some people are... Uh, in touch with what other countries are doing because they have relatives and friends out there and of course we've got quite a lot going on here so let's pray 
loving God. We live to you, the big polluting countries and their leaders, and pray that they will be able to effect the change necessary in order to combat climate change and global warming. We pray that those who doubt will see the truth. Lord, we know that we are polluting our planet because we've seen the changes that happened very quickly when the whole of the world locked down. Regardless of whether we totally believe or not, Lord, help us to be better stewards. Help us to stop wasting food and resources. Help us to curb our use of plastics because there is evidence of those being in the seas. Lord, we pray that as winter approaches, there will be many um, natural occurrences, disasters, hurricanes, snowstorms and the like. And we pray that those countries would be able to, um, and fires, would be able to ride those storms out. That homes and lives and livelihoods would be protected. Lord, we pray for our natural world and all the life on our globe, all creatures and plant life of the earth. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for those countries in the developing world where access to support, food, hygiene, medicine, education is limited or denied. We pray that there would be justice and mercy, that there would be an equal share of resources from those who are rich to those who are poor. We give thanks for those who work for peace, who work in education, for those who our first responders that go into war-torn uh, or earthquakes in order to offer support, medicine and health care. Those charities that go across borders, Medicine Sans Frontières, the Red Cross, Sight Savers. and all those other agencies that we see so often advertised. Those charities that rely on our giving and support in the wealthy countries in order to care for simple, treatable, recoverable illnesses and diseases that happen in poorer countries. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for doctors, nurses, medical researchers and all those who around the world who are seeking to develop vaccines, to fight all sorts of illnesses, diseases and viruses. Those who are working in difficult circumstances with lack of resources and medicines to minister to the very sick. Those where there is a short supply of oxygen. Those, our own country, where our NHS is teetering on the brink of being overwhelmed yet again. We pray for all those doctors and nurses who look with dismay at the situation and we pray for them. We pray for their protection, mental and physical. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for the COP26 summit that will be happening in this country. We pray that world leaders would attend, that changes rather than just discussions will be made. We pray for the safety of that summit. And Lord, we pray for the safety of all democracies and all just governments and leaders 
that care for their people rather than for their own self-interest. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for those countries where there is injustice, where there is persecution. We pray for those who work to seek for human rights. And we ask your protection. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. It's half term. Draws near. We pray for our teachers and our students. We ask your blessing to be upon them on these last few days. Lord, we know that the COVID is around in our schools and we pray for the mental health, the physical health and the educational health of our children and young people. Lord, we prayed and hoped that there would be less disruption this new school academic year, yet it seems to be as bad as it was before. Lord, we pray that there would be a way forward, that this virus would come to an end and that those who have been affected uh, by this virus uh, through education difficulties would be able to be caught up and would not be harmed in the future as a result. We lift to you our teachers, Noel, Lisa, Nick, Gareth, Susan, Michael, Sue, Joshua, Chris, Rebecca, Asher, Matthew, Sarah, Heather, Marie, Michael, teaching assistants and all those who work in our education. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. I see the... Oh, let me see, I can't quite read it because I've could do with my eyes being tested, I think. Oldbourne School is closing early for half term because of the, some cases of COVID. There are many schools. I was in South Marston on Monday and they have cases to teachers and students, Lord. So, Lord, we do pray for our schools. We pray for our young people, Joel, Talitha, Grace, Emily, Lily, Jacob, Hannah, Jake, Oscar, Ella, Kerry, Anton, Callum, Phoebe, Ellie, Travis, Nathan, Ruby, Noah, Evie, Charlie, Jack, Mia, Luca, Joden, Ethan, Aidan and Amalia. Lord, protect them. In your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for those who are unwell at this time. We pray particularly for our nursing and care homes where the very vulnerable and the very weak, we pray for their safety. We pray for Orchid House and many other homes that will be uh, working hard to protect those residents, our loved ones. We give thanks for the caring staff that work in these places and all those who work in care, knowing that it is a calling as much as doctors and nurses and priests and vicars and the like, Lord. We give thanks for those who really care in our communities, for the weak, for the vulnerable, social workers, care workers, first responder units. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for our loved ones who are unwell, for Mark, for Addie and her family, for William and his family, for Pauline, Linda, Stuart, Beryl, Eunice, George and Maria, Bob, John, Mary, Mary, Jordan, Wendy, John, Janet, Annette, Jim, Joe and the family, John, Liz, Dave and the family, Daniel, Peter, Shane, Tilly, Jan, Linda and the family. Chris, Anna, Mary, Martina and Trowdle, Andy, Catherine, Anne, Sarah, Nicholas, Martin, Pat, Jeff and Hilary, Tom, Esme, Nilva and family, Len, 
John and Val, Peter and Bridget, Ken, Rose, Barbara, Sylvia, Gwen, Christine, Greg, Stephanie and the family, Josie, the Curtis family, Leslie, Angie, Anne and Angela. Lord, minister to each and every single one of them according to your wisdom. Guide those who may be seeking to help with medical care for these our loved ones and may they recover to full health. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Just looking to see. No, that's fine. I was just looking to see if there were any other prayer requests that have come in. Lord, in your mercy, we pray now for all who are affected by the coronavirus, for illness, isolation or anxiety around our world and in this country. We pray that they would find relief and recovery. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for those guiding our nation at this time and shaping national policies. We pray that they would make wise decisions. Lord, we lift to you the situation going on with COVID and rising in cases. And we pray that our government would give us the guidance that we need in order to protect the NHS and ourselves. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for the vulnerable and for the fearful, for the gravely ill and the dying this day, for their families, that all may know your comfort and peace. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And so we commend ourselves and all for whom we pray to the mercy and protection of our God. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. God, the giver of life, whose Holy Spirit wells up within your church, by the Spirit's gift, gifts, equip us to live the gospel of Christ and make us eager to do your will, that we may share with the whole of the whole creation the joys of eternal life. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. So we pray with confidence as our Saviour has taught us. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. The Lord bless us and preserve us from all evil and keep us in eternal life. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thank you for joining with me for morning prayer. Today's the last day for me for a little while. Mark is with you the rest of this week. I'm away on annual leave or retreat next week. Um, I'm not quite sure. It's a bit of both, really. Uh, please do pray for me that it is incident free. Uh, most of you will know that have joined us this morning that I have not had a particularly uh, stre any stress free holidays at all this year with my elderly parents. So I would really uh, value your prayers for me that my dad stays safe and healthy and well this coming week and that I would get the rest and uh, Recovery needed, ready for Christmas season. So, uh, as I pray for you, I hope you will pray for me. And in the meantime, may the blessing of God, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be with you and those whom you love today and always. Amen. Stay safe, stay healthy, everyone. Bless you.